Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and I appreciate you being here at the channel today. And for those of you that have not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And if you find the content that I provide beneficial, please hit that like button as well. Now, our topic for you today, it's how to cultivate a positive attitude and stay motivated. How to cultivate a positive attitude and stay motivated. I want to give you six things that you can think about to you know, help maintain this positive attitude, help maintain this motivation, not only for you, if you're an owner, if you're a manager, you're a department head, but then also things that you can do for staff or if you're an individual uh, sales rep or you know, staffer inside a gym, these are things that you can do as well. Okay, so we want to maintain that positive attitude. We want to stay motivated. We want to stay disciplined at this. So number one is we need to visualize what our goals are. You know, what are our goals? And, you know, one of the things that I find to be true so often is that when do people write down their goals? You know, more often than not, you know, it's New Year's Eve. You know, it's that New Year's resolution. And what I like to see us do is, you know, let's write down our goals. And we'll talk about how we develop this here in a bit. But let's write down what our goals are. And what I would suggest, I mean, these goals, it's not a to-do list, okay? You know, your, your goals, these are the, the, the big things that you want to accomplish. You might want to run a chain of clubs one day. You might want to be a, an international sales trainer, you know, things of this nature. You know, write down those kind of goals. Keep them at the forefront because sometimes, you know, what that'll do, that'll help you, you know, really persevere, you know, through some potential roadblocks. And if you want to have some short term, some medium term goals, you know, that's fine too. But let's make sure we write these goals down. Now, one of the additional comments that I would make here that I have found to be true, okay, is that we kind of need to do this every day. So what I would suggest is first thing in the morning when you get up, write down your goals. And these can change a little bit. They don't have to always stay the same. But write down your goals. Again, it's not a to-do list. When you go to bed every night, write down your goals. You know, what you're trying to do, you're trying to maintain interest, maintain desire, ma maintain focus on this because it's easy for, you know, circumstances to, you know, take us, uh, you know, off course a little bit. And then the third thing that I would suggest when it comes to writing down our goals, if during the course of a day that you experience disappointment, that's another time right there, sit down and write down your goals again. Keep these goals at the forefront of what you're trying to do. Okay. Now, number two, you know, kind of along these same lines here is we're going to write down these goals, but now let's prepare an action plan that will allow us to achieve that. What does that action plan need to look like? Because what we want to do, we want to, I think, you know, simplify this. It can be big goals. It can be a big action plan, but let's simplify it. You know, let's do the math on this. You know, what is it going to take to get where, to where I want to go, okay? And you can have, you know, the forefront of it, you know, very realistic things, very simple things, almost easy things that you can do. But then, you know, to accomplish the bigger goals, here's more of what needs to happen. Maybe you need to meet, you know, this kind of person. You need to be part of this organization. Whatever these things, you know, might be, okay? So let's, let's raise this action plan. Let's make sure we've got our goals established. So number one and number two are really the, the epicenter of this, okay? Now, number three is we want to have, we want to have a, uh, a backup plan. Okay, you know, I always refer to it as roadblocks and setbacks. And so we've got this nice plan. We're working toward this. And if things don't go like we hope, okay, what's the alternative? What does plan B look like? You know, I know as this video is being produced, there's, you know, there's ice storms and snowstorms uh, uh, across, uh, you know, a good part of the country. Now, this may require some facilities to be closed, okay? The landlord's still going to want rent. You're still going to want to make money. So what is the backup plan? Like in that scenario, what is that solution? Okay. So make sure we have a, a, a backup plan. You know, how are we going to handle roadblocks and setbacks? You know, what is it going to look like? We have to make sure we're always moving forward uh, toward this. Uh, number six, we want to learn what I would call positive self-talk, right? And here's the big thing that I see is there's very much a tendency sometimes to start talking about what's wrong and what's wrong and why it's not working and what's wrong. 
and I've always kind of been of the opinion that most folks can identify that. Okay, that's not always the hardest thing to recognize. You know, the hardest thing is try, you know, talking about and thinking about, hey, what's the solution? And so when it comes to this positive self-talk, let's always be looking at solutions. Let's always be looking at taking positive action steps. The more we start to do this, the more you know, good things are going to happen for you. Okay. Number five, develop a routine. Okay. How do you like doing this? You know, what's your strategy for doing this? You know, maybe your know, marketing is a big part of this for you. So maybe you know, first thing when you get up in the morning, I mean, you handle your your marketing for that day. You get it set up. It's going to be automated. You've got it set. You've got it ready to go. And that's what you do every single morning, regardless. Okay, but develop a routine and how you're going to work toward this. You know, when you walk into the office every day, you know, first thing you look at, you know, is key performance indicators. You know, where are you at right now? You know, what do our projections look like? What do they look like relative, uh, you know, to what our goals are? You know, what do we need to do today, you know, to get closer toward that number? You know, that kind of thing. Get that routine in place. Uh, number six create a competitive environment. Now, if, if you're in a, you know, a gym environment, I mean, have a sales contest. Okay. I mean, have a sales contest. You can have, you can have a, a front desk and have a guest pass return contest. Okay. There's a lot of things that we can do in terms of creating a competitive environment. If you're working by yourself, you know, if it's just you and you're trying to say, how, how can I create a more competitive environment? You know, what is the best day you've ever had? Best week you've ever had? Best month you've ever had? Okay, most money you've ever made. You know, set goals like that and try to break them. I know I used to work with a, a gym owner one time, and uh, her, one of her things that she liked to do is every month she would have like she'd set a date, and that's going to be our record day. So every month she was trying to break that record day. Okay, and so it created a very competitive uh, environment. And number seven, don't forget to reward yourself on all of this. A lot of times we forget this. You know, sometimes we forget why we got into the business. And one of the things that I would always suggest that we go back to is understanding your powerful why. Why do you do this? Why do you do it as an owner, as a manager, uh, as a salesperson, as an operations person, as a trainer? Why? I know the first why, hey, you want to make money, you want to pay your bills. We all kind of have that one, right? But okay, great. Okay. Why is that important to you? Why is it important to you to do this? How is this going to change your life if you master all of this? You know, maybe it's a, a sense of freedom. Uh, maybe it's a, a chance to run a, a chain of, of clubs someday. Maybe that's what it is. But know your why. The, the biggest thing that I think can make a difference is knowing that why, because now the, the goals are so big, whatever those obstacles are, they're going to seem mighty small in comparison. And this is going to go a long ways toward helping you stay positive, stay motivated, and staying disciplined on what you're doing. So take a look at these seven things. See where you fit in there. Are there one or two or maybe all of them that you can take and you can adjust that can change how you look at this? Because what you're trying to do I mean, you're trying to give 100% of yourself, you know, to, to make this thing happen, to create this. Well, let's don't get complacent with it. Sometimes we can kind of go through the motions of it if we're not careful. All right, folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Uh, if you found the content that I provide beneficial, please hit that subscribe button. And we look forward to seeing y'all on that next video.